So I'm hanging out in Harlem on 116th Street, also known as Little Senegal. And you might know that this area is home to a very vibrant African community. And you also might know that Harlem has now become the hot spot for finding traditional, authentic African food. Right along this strip, there are so many African restaurants, African eateries, cafes popping up left and right. So me, I decided to venture out into the street and go into these restaurants and see like what's cooking. Africa in the city. Real Africans, real story. During the 1980s, an influx of Senegalese immigrants to New York City's Harlem helped create what is now Little Senegal. Senegalese of the Islamic Murid faith were amongst the first to relocate to the Central Harlem neighborhood, which at the time was infested with drugs and crime. Today, Senegalese, Ivorians, Somalis, and a plethora of other African immigrants in general are providing New York City's African community with a taste of home. Sisse is the head chef and owner of Ponti Bistro. He's originally from Senegal and serves up a fusion of Senegalese and French dishes. I hung out with him at his Ponti location in Harlem where he showed me how to make chicken yassa, one of the country's national dishes. Now this takes a long time to cook. You make that for your husband, he's not going to find a second wife. <laughs> <laughs> But if you don't do it, I'm sorry, he's gonna find a second wife. <laughs> Senegalese cuisine reflects the influence of many other West African countries, Morocco to the north, and even a hint of Vietnamese. The legacies of French and Portuguese colonialism remains evident in dishes today. Do you see like Africans, Africans from Senegal still eating and having their same cultural experience? I, I mean, absolutely, especially in Harlem. So we have a little community named Senegalese, uh, Little Senegal. So we have the restaurant, we have the store and everything. And whatever you need is there. You have your kids here, you have your cousins, uncle, everybody's here. So it's like home. I mean, it's nothing better than that. It's home. So I know that you have this restaurant and this is fine dining. You want people to experience African food in a, in a more fancier setting. But do you still keep it traditional at home? At home, yes. Yes, mm -hmm. yes, okay. definitely. We got family coming, friends, especially weekend, Sunday. You got the nephews and cousins. Everyone still eats Everybody, together, right? Yeah, they come, they want, you know, my wife is here and she's from Senegal. So every Sunday we try to make a nice dinner for the friends to come over, you know, eat and talk about politics, exactly. talk sport. about things back home, right? Yeah. I finished up at Ponte and heard about a new African restaurant providing a rare African cuisine, even for Little Senegal. Safari Restaurant, specializing in authentic Somali food, is creating new buzz for East Africans in Harlem and throughout New York City. Adam Ibrahim is Somali. He recently relocated to New York City from San Diego, California to manage Safari Restaurant, the family business. Ibrahim says everything at Safari is made from scratch and authentically Somali. He introduced me to various Somali foods and drinks and chicken sukha would be my very first Somali meal. Our food is not similar to a, to a specific food in East Africa or any country in East Africa, but like I was telling you the chapati, which you call sabaya, is a, it's, it's very common dish 
in Kenya, Uganda, Burundi, Tanzania, Somalia, India, due to the colonization of the Italians and the Britain and, and France of Somalia, we have all these influences, like we have Indian influences, we have uh, Persian influences, we have Italian influences. This is a vinto. This is a dish, I mean, a, I mean, not a dish, but a beverage that we have in Somalia. It's sort of uh, how people do hibiscus, um, our form of hibiscus. Very good, actually. There used to be a saying around where it's the fact that it's red, right? We would say that um, it also increases your blood. Just as kids, you know what I mean? <laughs> so we would tell our mothers, hey, get us some more vinto. But it's, uh, you know. So about that much of vinto. Uh, as, as much as I've ate Somali food elsewhere, especially, particularly in Minnesota, even in San Diego, and, and, and places I've been to, I have never had the kingfish since Somalia, which we have on the menu at the moment until I came to this restaurant, until, until we opened this restaurant and our chef prepared it for me. And it took me back, it took me back to my mother and my mother's cooking. Kingfish is a native to our waters in the Indian Ocean. As you know, Somalia has the longest coastline in Africa. So that gives us a much appreciation to go into the seafood world, you know. And uh, so a lot of people from the inlands don't dive into seafood much, but just this the coastal uh, Somalis. So I'm from Mogadishu, which is the capital of Somalia. This has rosemary, thyme, basil, um, oregano, sage. Um, it also has cream and coconut base as well. So it's a lot going on here. This is something directly out of Somalia. Since our food is a fusion, if you never had Somali food before, I can't say you've had it all. Yes, come check this out. And voila. We don't say bon appetit, but we say asho in accent. And that's how we serve it. It's good to see an East African establishment, you know, flourish. Uh, are there many? I mean, no, there, there, are, there aren't any. This is the only one I know of in New York, outside of maybe DC, but this is the only one I know in New York. So next I'm waiting for Kenyan. I finished up my chicken cigar and took the kingfish to go. I was heading back west to indulge in some fufu. La Savane is an Ivorian restaurant with a Senegalese twist. Dembele is a native of Ivory Coast and has been in business for nearly seven years. Ivory Coast is the land of cocoa and coffee. The country is the largest producer of cocoa in the world. Fish, cassava, and plantains are staple meals with many other dishes being similar to other West African countries. It's carrying the onion, trying to make a sauce. Okay. Yeah. This is the sauce, right? This is the sauce of it. Okay. That's a mix of uh, green pepper, red pepper, and onions, okay. and tomato. You know, that's it right here, that goes for um, poisson. poisson and uh, lamb shank. Okay. We do the lamb shank and we do like a, um, a fowl chicken. This is the plantain. That's a pond. Pond yam. Pond, pond plantain. That's a, um, a palm nut sauce. What kind of meat is in there? Uh, we have like a cow food mm -hmm. and uh, mix a little bit of uh, smoked turkey. The fufu, how do they make it? Is this something that they start earlier in the day and they just create a lot, or is it made like instant? So it's like a, when you got the plantain, they really oh. plantain and they have to pound it. Oh. Once it's like a pound, so you got so to get So it's directly it. from the plantain? Not directly, but they have to boil it first to make it soft and then put on the blender and then put on the pot and mix it. Are there a lot of Ivorians that come eat here, or is it mainly like just Africans in general? Uh, I mean, it's not just African. White people, everybody come in here. It's not just African. Do the white people come and eat fufu? A lot, fufu, and uh, the fish, lamb shank, chicken pho. Yeah. What's the most popular uh, dish that you sell here? Uh, you know, fish is always the best. To eat fufu is, uh, you gotta be for your, and usually when we are like back home, 
We don't use a fork. We don't use lack of spoon. Exactly. So I shouldn't, we use, try, I shouldn't use this, right? Yeah, but if you want. But, uh, you know, here in the United States, that's a different story. But uh, back home, we use lack of finger and carry by a piece, plug it, and straight. Yeah. I have a friend of mine. He's an African-American. He asked me, you want to eat good African food? You never eat African food. I said, okay, let's go to my restaurant. We come to La Savane. I order a chicken, poisson bête for you. He said, you're going to take to home. When you get home, you relax, you're going to eat it. The next day, he see me, he see Ahmed, can't believe it. He said, you know what? I eat last night. It's good. But when you leave to next day, it's more uh, it's be better. better. All right, so I was taught to, when I'm eating fufu, to make like a little hole. I still can never really get it right, but here we go. I don't understand how the hole works, but as long as it goes in my mouth, that's what matters. Wow, this plantain poo-poo is really good. Oh my God, I'm so full. I've been eating since like 11 a.m. <laughs> So it's been a very long day. I had Senegalese food earlier. I had chicken yasa over there. I just finished eating some fufu and palm oil sauce. They call it futu in Ivory Coast. Who would ever thought that? And I even had some food from Somalia all on 116th Street in New York City. Who would have thought that as well? So I'm done for the day. My stomach is like very tight, as you can see. So I'm going home. Africa in the city. Real Africans, real stories.